It was a dream of sweet love, hours of happiness and desire. That was the poem from yesterday, that I dreamed of golden color, vain chimeras which the heart will never decipher. Such a fleeting idyll, a dream of love, of adoration. When the flowers on your rose bush bloom more beautiful again, you will remember my love and will have to recognize the obis of my woe. Of this beguiling poem, nothing remains between us. At my sad farewell, you will feel the depth of my pain. Hello everybody and welcome to our episode number 62 of Around the World in 80 Tangos. The piece today is a piece that all tango dancers in the world know, we guess. Poema in a recording of Francisco Canaro from year 1935. The singer is Roberto Maida. And Poema has two names of people who wrote it, Eduardo Bianco and Mario Melfi. And behind this piece is a crime story. Yes, the song says goodbye, farewell to a lady of a love, and there is mentioned a woe, some pity, something really horrible, what happened, and this is supposed to be a killing. And it's true. It's a true crime story, because uh, while Bianco played 1924 in Buenos Aires with an orchestra, the piano player of this band had an affair with his wife. He killed him. He got arrested, went to jail, but already in this time he had good connections to upper class, to right-winged circles, so he soon was released, but he had to go to Europe. Leave the country. To leave the country, yes. And of course he went to Paris. This yes. was the mecca for tango musicians in this time, in 1924. Yes. This was the place to go. And he met, of course, many Argentinians there. Unfortunately, the competition was high, so he had to make a difference. So he had his own ideas. He met Gennaro Esposito, who was already established in Europe and Manuel Pizarro, another big name. And he developed a style which was more adjusted to European tastes. And I think this is one of the origins of the March-like European tango, which has nothing to do with the Argentinian. And finally, he joined with Bachicha, Juan Batista de Ambrogio, a bandoneon player who was with Roberto Firpo and at this time, a fine player. And they built an orchestra together. They formed an orchestra under the name Bianco Bacicca and uh, toured throughout Europe, also to the US, and they performed in big houses, in the Opera of Paris, in the Opera of New York, everywhere. They went to all European countries. And they spent even seven months traveling through the USSR. Yes. In a review, uh, Bianco tells about his encounter with Josef Stalin, and that guy was really pleased with his music, like Adolf Hitler later. So he was quite flexible, or despite of his fascist sympathies, he had no problem to travel to the Soviet Union. And he met Mussolini. He dedicated his composition, Evocación y Destino, to the Honorable excellence of uh, Benito Mussolini. Later he would perform in front of the Spanish king Alfonso XIII, one year before this guy abdicated to make place for the Spanish Republic, which Bianco of course detested because he was a sympathizer of fascism. And he dedicated the song Plegaria to this king. And there's a sad story about this song. 
he recorded this song in Berlin and also in Berlin he played this song in front of Adolf Hitler. It was a reception in the Argentine embassy and uh, the whole orchestra joined there with top Nazi officials, including Adolf Hitler. They had an asado and a concert of tango. And Hitler liked Plegaria. He asked for a second version. And then later it became infamous in the concentration camps. It was called the Tango of Death. And it's said that the camp orchestras had to play it while other camp members have been brought to the gas chambers. Later, one of the inmates, Paul Celan, who survived these horrors, wrote a poem. Yes, this is his famous poem, Todesfuge, the Fugger of Death. The original title was Todestango, the Tango of Death, but then he turned it into the Fuga. And this is a hint that this uh, story about the Tango of Death and Plegaria was true, because we have uh, the testimony of Paul Celan. In 1943, he left Europe, went back to Buenos Aires. It was not easy for him. He went back to Buenos Aires, where he was not well received. First of all, he had the fame of a stool pigeon, of a spy. For example, he was uh, once arrested in 37 in France because of this. He was a spy for the Germans, which was reported by Enrique Cardicamo, who warned also his fellow Argentinians to talk with Bianco about politics or anything because of his connections with the Nazis. The other problem was that his uh, musical abilities were like a bit spoiled by the European experience where he was a big star during the war until things went well for the Nazis. But in Argentina we had meanwhile Anibal Troilo, Carlos Di Sali, Miguel Caló, guys like this. So he couldn't match this quality. No way. But he still had fame in the US. He was quite popular in the US, he was quite popular in the Middle East. So he continued to travel there, but he had health problems. That's also a reason why he couldn't stay in Buenos Aires. He had asthma, so he went to another part of Argentina. And he died forgotten and rejected in 1959 in Argentina. The credits for this piece, we say is Eduardo Bianco and Mario Melfi. But it's not really true. It's said that it was a sort of a group creation while the orchestra of Bianco Bacicca was traveling in a train. So the orchestra together built this piece and for reasons of copyright they just decided to give this credit to Bianco and Melfi. And about Mario Melfi we talked in our episode number 59. If you wanted to listen this feel free to do. And with this we say goodbye from our episode number 62 of Around the World in 80 Tangos with some sad stories today for a really romantic piece. Poema in the recording of Francisco Canaro. The singer was Roberto Maida from 1935. Thank you for traveling with us through tangos we love and we hope you enjoyed. This was Daniela and Raimund Tango Mundo Berlin. Stay home. Stay home.